Hello! I'm so excited about this dish I'm going to make. Have you been to Spain? Have you been to Barcelona? Well, at Barcelona, I, well, I've been there a couple of times. I'm thinking of Sagrada Familia, the huge church that Gaudi made. It's almost like a, an enormous mosaic, one of the most spectacular things in the world. Well, the last time I was there, and I'm sure it was that way the first time, but I don't remember, we walked around the back of it and there were vendors selling Spanish food. Maybe it was just a food fair, I don't know. But there were vendors with enormous pots of paella. They're actually pans, big flat pans on braziers. And paella is traditionally not only a rice dish, but a seafood dish. And there's quite often some meats in it and some chicken. Well, if you know me, you know I haven't had any meat or chicken for almost three years. Actually, it'll be, it'll be three years this month. And um, I love paella. I loved it back then. And when I saw this recipe with that Plant Strong, look at plantstrong.com, you'll find some wonderful whole food plant-based um, recipes and menus. It's a great site. I thought, I'm gonna try it. So I haven't tried this yet. You're going to be watching me follow their directions. I changed a, little thing, a few things already. Um, but when you get the recipe that well, I'll have on my uh, YouTube site, uh, that will be, and that will include any changes that I made. All right, did you see, I don't know, well, you couldn't tell, you couldn't see the fire under here, but this pan has been on for a while, and it is really hot. I'm looking for my spatula, there it is. Really hot. Did you notice something else about it? Maybe you didn't, because I didn't show you this way. There's no oil in this pan. Now this pan is a scan pan. It's one of the safest of the non-stick, well, it's in a group of the safest non-stick uh, uh, cookware brands. Uh, Google top five safest non-stick cookware. You'll see scan pan, you'll see several other, others, all plaid, maybe one of them. And they're using a titanium ceramic, unlike the old um, Teflon, which was actually quite dangerous. As it heated, it gave out gases that, well, killed birds for one thing, one thing, but they also were very damaging to our lungs. So I'm cooking this on medium. Onions are quite moist, and so they caramelize in a hot pan. You don't need oil for them to do that. I'm cooking them until they're translucent. That means that they lose, they become more opaque. And so they're caramelizing, they're becoming more opaque, which means that they lose some of that strident flavor. And um, the caramelization makes them a little bit sweeter as well. So I'll keep talking while I'm letting them do their thing. I think I'll even put a little bit hotter. Quite often with this method, I'll add a couple of tablespoons of broth or water. Uh, I prefer broth. Broth actually, um, uh, oh shoot, I've lost the word. Um, oh, evaporates. <laughs> Quite often evaporates much more quickly than water does, actually. You'll put in a broth, it'll go bubble, bubble, brown a little, and be gone. And then you'll do it again, and maybe again, when you're caramelizing something, that's called deglazing the pan when you add that. But this is already smelling great. It's becoming more translucent. I don't know if you can see that it's less white. It's a little bit more beige. And what this recipe calls for, instead of all of those seafoods that make paella so yummy, but I don't eat seafood. For one thing, I don't want to kill something to eat it. For another thing, our oceans are so polluted that 99.9% .9 of the seafood we get is polluted, even the wild caught quite often because of some new laws that allow it to be called wild caught, 
when it really isn't. They are, they are farmed and then let free and then they catch them and they call that wild caught or vice versa. So I just don't want things in my body that are so heavily polluted by polluted oceans, microplastics, and all that I've said. Uh, although I loved paella and I loved seafood. So instead, what I'm going to be putting in here is garbanzo beans, asparagus, and artichoke hearts to flavor it, to make it savory. I'm adding in just a minute, this is looking good. It's getting brown just a tiny bit. I'm gonna let it go and actually, as much as I'd like to hurry it so that I don't waste your time, um, you really don't want to hurry it because the caramelization of onion, now burning is another thing, it will get bitter. Uh, actually, not nearly as bitter as if you add, for example, I'm gonna be adding five nice sized cloves of sliced garlic. And if I added that too early and it became too hot because it doesn't have the moisture to caramelize well, uh, it will toast slightly, but not caramelize well, I would end up with very bitter garlic. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of broth to this. This is my homemade broth. Can you hear it bubbling up? You can kind of see it do that. It actually enhances the browning. Look how quickly it's browning. Because while it was in the pan, caramelizing, it was leaving little brown bits that when a little bit of broth hits them, um, brown up very quickly. Can you see that? Now I'm going to add, again, five cloves of sliced garlic. So it's not finely minced. It's sliced so that if I get a bit of that on my tongue while I'm eating, it's just a delightful little treat because by then it's slightly toasty. It's going to have been cooked so it'll be sweet. All right, now I'm letting the garlic brown just slightly. You can hear this lovely little, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm losing all this food. I'm creating this pile down here. I'm stepping around it. It's kind of the way I cook, actually. All right. Ah, uh, this is nice. Do you see the difference between when I started and right now? I think it's just about ready for my next ingredient. I'm smelling the garlic, it is not burnt. The onion smells lovely. This was a very big, nicely, finely sliced onion, five cloves of garlic. This is about 10 ounces of tomato. So the recipe called for two tomatoes or 260 grams, but that translates to about 10 grams, I mean 10 ounces. So I had a farm fresh tomato from the farm store. We go every Sunday to this area. I live in Riverside, California, that's Southern California, about 60 minutes east of LA. And we have a family that owns, I don't know how many acres, 10 acres, 15 acres, and they farm there in the middle of the city, I'm sure it's used to, or it was residential. I'm sure it's worth a, a bundle, but they've done this for decades, maybe 20, 30 years. And um, they uh, pick the food, sell it that day. They don't sell it the next day. They have new food out and you get what is growing in their fields. So it's all farm fresh, no spray, and it's not organic because they haven't gone for that certification. But we all use it and we know that they don't spray. They tell us they don't and there's never been any evidence 
that they did. Okay, now I'm going to add, the tomato is breaking down. Let me get that just a little bit more broken down. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm still throwing things on the floor. We'll be eating this for dinner tonight. It's about 20 to five. And um, I expect that I'll be able to serve this at about 5.30 because you're going to see that it's going to set a while for the flavors to marry before I actually serve it. All right, I'm gonna put in red bell pepper, a medium bell pepper. Look at this beauty, that was from the Corona Family Farm Store. Mm. It's, I used a little less than this. That would have been a bit too much. And let me get this mixed in and just slightly softened. What's happening as I'm doing this is that even the tomato juice, because there was a lot of broth from that tomato as I sliced it up and diced it, kept every bit of that. All of that is creating a rich, um, I'm going to say sort of sweetness, the way tomato paste compares to just a raw tomato. It's sweeter because it's um, more concentrated. And pretty soon, I'm going to put in a cup and a half of short grain brown rice if you're a purist, you're probably going to use an arborio rice, the, the, the kind that you use for risotto, or you'll use a specialized paella rice. I think a short grain organic brown rice is just fine and certainly easier to find. And now I'm getting a beautiful bubbling. See this? Everything is mirroring. Everything is softening nicely, but just as importantly, I'm getting flavors, and that's why I'm not rushing this. Then I'm going to throw in the rice, and I'm going to brown it somewhat. Now I um, rinsed the rice, so it's probably ideally you want dry rice, it browns better, but I always rinse my grains and my rices because I think they need to be. I think that they are picked in fields and sit in silos and they're packaged in warehouses and they can, by their nature, stay around a long, long time. and. I just think it's a good idea to rinse things off of something like that, just like we would an apple or a pear before we eat it. Now, I'm letting this um, absorb the water that I had in there, and I'm adding a couple of tablespoons of water to which, I don't want to miss one tiny little bit in here, to which, I broke up saffron. Now, what is saffron besides incredibly expensive? Oh, man. Yes, that makes me smile. I love the fragrance of saffron. And that's what makes a paella, a lot of Spanish dishes, but especially oh, a paella. Saffron is from a plant like a crocus that has a stamen. The stamen, you have petals, you have the stamen come out. They are literally, each little piece of saffron is, uh, let me, where would I put it where you can see it? Well, I guess just right there, is a stamen. And they pick these stamens by hand, 
oh, I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to overdo it. If you overdo saffron, it can be really harsh. But I just completely lost control. <laughs> anyway, I bought this one at um, it's Kirkland, so at Costco. Um, saffron from um, uh, La Mancha, Spain, Spanish saffron. And there are some make-believe things that aren't saffron at all. They're from other plants gathered in um, ways that are uh, rather aggressive and use equipment so it's not the same. That means they get all kinds of plant parts. Okay, now I'm going to stir in three cups of broth. This is my own homemade broth. And I'm gonna cover this. The thing that makes paella a prize, if it's done well, is that you'll get something called a socarette. Uh, S-O-C-A-R-R-A-T, socarette. And it's, it's Spanish for to burn, but you're not burning what you're doing, and I'm covering this now. And I'm gonna put it on medium, and I'm gonna watch it carefully. But what happens is that the rice on the bottom of this wide pan with a relatively hot fire will, um, as it's absorbing moisture, it's also getting a lot of heat. You're never stirring it, you're leaving it alone, and it starts to crisp up. And that's what you want at the bottom of a paella pan. That's this crisp layer of rice. Let's see what happens today. So I'm gonna let this sit for 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And then I'm gonna test it and see how the rice is. Then I'm gonna lay over, uh-oh, was I supposed to? Hold on a minute. Oh, 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 just a minute. Let me look at my recipe. Um. Sorry to put you through this. Uh, da da da. Ah, I forgot that part. Okay. I was supposed to add my paprika. One whole tablespoon of paprika. I added to the recipe, which it wasn't called for, some oregano, a little less than a half a teaspoon of oregano, and some cumin because those are spices I very much like. And the recipe called for a tablespoon of, um, of chili flakes. I think that might have taken our mouth off. So I put one teaspoon of chili flakes. I'll taste it later and I can add more later. Okay, sorry for the snafu. All right, now I'll go back and describe things. Okay, get this going. Okay, 25 minutes. And I'm going to then add to the top of it, if this were a traditional paella, I would, the top would then be decorated with chorizo, sausage, with, again, maybe a chicken leg, um, a piece of meat, but usually seafood, shrimp, scallops, things like that. But instead, I'm using uh, garbanzo beans, and I make my own garbanzo beans. I just make a couple of pounds in my Instant Pot, and with a lot of savory flavors in the broth, and drain it off well, and then refrigerate them, or freeze them actually, in one quart bags after they've been drained. And when you put them in the bags and you freeze them, you can break them apart in the bags very easily. And so I have packages in my freezer of my own homemade garbanzo beans that were organic and that were seasoned the way I like 
with some onion, with some garlic, with some carrot, with some celery. So very, very flavorful broth when I'm finished, which I save and I use for a soup. And, um, but those are all in chunks so I can get them out of the broth easily. I don't chop them up. And then, as I said, I'll be putting these on top of it, artichoke heart, asparagus, and um, garbanzo beans. And I think it's gonna be great. You'll get to see what it looks like. I'll be back. Okay, I've let this cook about 30 minutes. I'm gonna lift the pan. I can hear it sizzle at the bottom. I'm gonna be adding the rest of the broth. I'm going to put the rest of the vegetables in. And the instructions say to jiggle it a little bit, but I'm gonna put the broth in first. Okay, let me just get this set up. So we're adding garbanzo beans instead of scallops. <laughs> I'll take them. We're adding artichoke hearts. The recipe called for artichoke hearts. Didn't say slice them in half. I cut one in half to see what would happen, to see if maybe it, well, to see if it'll stand up to the cooking and not just disintegrate and fall into the, the individual leaves that is what artichoke is about. Uh, artichoke heart anyway. Yeah, because this one looks really fragile, like the whole thing's gonna fall apart. But let's, let's see. Okay. And then I'm going to scatter the asparagus. These are stems. Each of the, I had, a bunch of asparagus and I cut them into thirds per the directions of the recipe. And again, if we find that something here didn't work as ho well as I had hoped, we'll do it differently. And I'll note it on the recipe. I'm gonna scatter just a little bit of parsley here the rest will go in at the last minute. Now, some recipes say no peas in paella, and yet I've had paella with peas in it. Um, and I kind of like that, I like the color. So I have some frozen peas I'm gonna add at the very last minute when I let it sit. Now, I'm adding this, put the heat back up. I'm adding this very, I'll call it gingerly around the edges, so not to displace what I've already done. Okay. I'm sort of putting a, gently in the middle just because I added the tablespoon of lemon juice and I want to disperse that a little. All right. You know what I didn't do? I didn't test the rice. Why don't I test the rice? Let me find a place to get in there. Mm, definitely needs cooking. But then again, brown rice normally takes 40 to 45 minutes. So, and we are, although I, I am not a whole food plant-based, um, SOS free, completely um, cook. I avoid sugar of any kind. I will use dates to sweeten things, whole food, plant-based. I don't use oil, salt, oil, sugar free, SOS free, but I do use some salt. And when I tasted this, I, I and it's, it's basically what you're used to. Some people, if you are Working on, wait, let me look at time. Okay. If you are um, fighting a cardiovascular uh, condition, uh, absolutely get rid of the salt. As a matter of fact, follow Caldwell Esselstyn, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn 
all of his food is whole food, plant-based, SOS free, period, end of report. Um, some of the whole food, plant-based doctors are not quite as, um, uh, I was gonna say dogmatic, but that sounds negative, as restrictive with the salt. But we should be restrictive with salt uh, because it's in everything. And that's one of the reasons that I avoid um, uh, processed food as well. Full of salt, full of oils. And those aren't good for us. Those oils are so high in the omega-6s that it pushes out um, the, the ratio that we're trying to work with, omega-6 to 3, and that's about a 1 to 1 or a 3 at the highest of the 6s to 1 of the omega-3s. Those are the long chain fatty acids that we have to add to our diet through food. And um, if we have a lot of omega-6s from the oils that we get from processed food because it's in all of them, or using a lot of oils in our own cooking, and that's one of the reasons I don't use oil, um, it, that becomes inflammatory. The omega-6s are inflammatory, threes are actually anti-inflammatory and um, help build up our immunity. In any case, I'm gonna let this cook for 10 minutes, I'll be back to you and probably just to see what the rice looks like, to add the peas, then I have to let it sit another five to 10 minutes just to settle and then I'll serve it. And if by then my company is here, I can tell you've got some company coming and I'm ready to serve, I'll take a photo of the dish. I may not start up the video again. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> I know I am and I'll be back to you in a bit. Bye bye. Okay, so I'm back. It's been 10 minutes. I tested the rice just before I came on. I tested it and it has a tiny bit of bite to it, but I'm okay with that because what we're gonna do is I have these frozen peas. Why frozen? Because we don't want them to get soft. We just want them, they're already pre-cooked. All frozen vegetables are blanched. We just want them to still keep their color. I'm gonna add a little bit of the, I, I realized I could use that, a little bit more of the pepper flakes. I ground on it a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, the rest of the parsley is gonna go on when I'm ready to um, serve it. And I'm gonna cover it, take it off the heat, and let it sit. I have a kale salad that I'm about to serve. We'll eat that. We want this to rest just a little bit, flavors to marry, to let it settle in. We'll see how things go with the rice, the crispy bottom. I'll let you know on the recipe if I was able to accomplish that. And I think that's that. So I will say have a great day because I know I'm going to, but before I say goodbye, let me properly introduce myself. I'm Nan Simonson. I thought my husband was trying to say something to me. Are you trying to say something, dear? No. I'm Nan Simonson. I wrote Aging Powerfully. I'm all about whole food, plant-based, healthy eating, and lifestyle modifications, all part of the anagram powerfully in my book, that will allow us to live well and healthy into our, well, any years. Some of you are in your 20s, 30s, or 40s watching this. You've got many decades ahead. I'm 70. I'm looking for two to three decades ahead. I'd be great with that. So wherever you are, take great care of yourself, eat right, exercise, sleep well, de-stress, make sure that you are with people that you love and that you love, in other words, community and whole food plant-based, as close to that as you can, and you'll be the healthiest you can be. Bye-bye. <laughs>